When the Mavic 3 was released, it was still a work in progress, with several important features still missing. But it has been constantly updated and improved to become the best prosumer drone on the market. The story of the Mavic 3 Classic is different. It was born fully featured with all the bells and whistles from day one. It even has some extremely interesting new features that I will analyze in this video. These new functionalities have been added to the original Mavic 3 by the latest update. So, the two models are now practically identical, the only difference being the absence of the second lens, the telephoto one, this guy up here, in the new, more affordable Mavic 3 Classic. These are the notes of the version 010009 of the firmware, with some very useful new functionalities. Let's start with the first big new feature, cruise control. In the tab control the settings, by choosing button customization, it is now possible to assign cruise control to one of the two buttons of the remote controller, C1 or C2. Notice that this option is on the group control. In this first very simple example, I want to fly forward at a constant speed. Once I reach the desired speed of about 7 meters per second, I press the C1 button of the remote controller to enter cruise control. A message will appear on the lower part of the screen. On the left, another message will remain on screen until cruise control will be turned off. On the lower left corner, the two speed indicators turn yellow with a lock to show that cruise control is active. The aircraft advance in the desired direction at a constant speed and I can add some extra moves with much more control. Here I'm pushing the left sticks forward to ascend while turning slowly to the right. By hitting the C1 button again, cruise control is disabled. This time I try a compound movement for cruise control, so I push the right stick of the control towards me to go backward and the left sticks again towards me to descend. When I reach the desired speed, I hit that C button. We are gaining cruise control, combining the two moves, and again I can add any other movement, including the tilt of the gimbal. I can also choose a diagonal move by pushing the right stick forward and to the left, between 10 and 11 o'clock, and set it to cruise control. Now it is easy to concentrate on pushing the right stick to the right to keep the target in the same position on the frame, or to push the right stick forward to get closer. Cruise control, together with intelligent flight modes, spotlight and point of interest, is an excellent tool for easily obtaining precise and smooth cinematic footage. In the control tab of the settings, we find the option Gain and Export Tuning. Here we can adjust all sorts of parameters to control the behavior of the two sticks of the remote control in the three different speed modes. At the top, we have three tabs to choose one of the three modes, Cine, Normal and Sport. The first parameter is Max Horizontal Speed, which in Cine mode goes from an extremely slow value of 1 meters per second to 15, a huge range. It is also possible to set the Max Ascent and Max Descent speed independently for extremely precise move. As you can see, at minimum speed the aircraft is extremely slow. Some may ask why such a slow speed. Well, a very slow speed can be very useful to perform some very precise move when filming a subject at a close distance, for real estate, wildlife, or when filming people, maybe dancers, sports, musicians on stage, or people walking. Some previous DJI models had the tripod mode where the movements were much slower compared to the other modes. A lot of users miss that mode, but now it is possible to have something like a tripod mode that we can customize in any possible way. Excellent. It is something I was eagerly waiting for and I find this extremely useful. I would leave the mode normal and sport at their normal maximum value and adjust the speed value only in cinema mode, according to the different situations. 
The next two options, max angular velocity and yaw smoothness, are the usual ones to control how fast the aircraft can rotate around its axis and how quickly the movement stops when we let go of the stick. At maximum velocity, the drone rotates extremely fast, absolutely impossible to have any control. While with a minimum value of 10, the rotation is very smooth and easy to combine with other moves. I like to set this value very close to the minimum. The next slider, Yaw Smoothness, controls the behavior of the aircraft when the left stick of the control is released after a rotation. At a value of 0, the drone stops immediately when we let go of the stick in a very abrupt way, something to avoid. At the maximum value, it continues to turn laterally before coming very smoothly to a halt. There is a bit too much lag, so I prefer to set the value somewhere above the midpoint, at around 65. Then we have a slider for brake sensitivity to control the braking distance of the aircraft after releasing the right stick. This control was available in previous DJI models using the Go4 app. Some users have complained about abrupt braking with Mavic 3. This slider should fix the issue, although the difference between the minimum and maximum value is quite subtle. Further down we have the X values for the vertical rotation of the gimbal, the rotation of the aircraft around its axis, and the vertical elevation. They control how the movements are applied with partial move of the sticks or of the wheel. In the Mini 3 Pro, the X values are available only in normal and sport mode. While with the Mavic 3 and 3 Classic, we can also use them with Cine mode, which makes a lot of sense. Let's start with Pitch Roll, the vertical movement of the gimbal using the left wheel of the remote control. If we choose the minimum value of 0.1, with a small turn of the wheel at about a quarter of the full extension, the tilt of the gimbal will be extremely slow. And when we pass the midpoint, the movement will be much faster. If we set it to the maximum value, the move will be already relatively fast, even with a small excursion. And with a larger displacement of the wheel, the increase in speed will be less pronounced than before. The other two sliders for yo and up-down work in a similar way. I prefer value just below the midpoint, but I suggest experimenting with different values until you feel comfortable with the response of the aircraft to the controls. As an example, here I've set the yaw at 39, slightly below the midpoint, and I can get a nice slow movement by pushing the stick less than halfway, and then a smooth increase of rotation speed going all the way. I'm happy with it. Then we have the two sliders for speed and smoothness of the gimbal. They work in a similar way as the one for the yaw. Let's try the minimum speed of one. It is extremely slow too slow for our purposes. At the maximum value of 100, it is very fast and usable. So there is a huge latitude between the values, which is good, as it means plenty of choice. I find that the value around 20 works very well. Regarding smoothness, I like to set the value just below the maximum for a gradual end of the move. The flagship models of DJI Prosumer line now have an array of functionalities to control the movement. Cruise control and gain and expo tuning are two excellent tools for professional cinematic footage. Another major new feature of this update is the new night mode. It would take too long to analyze it in here. I will make a specific video about it in just a few days. I will add a link here as soon as it will be ready. Don't forget to hit the like button if you find this video interesting. Thank you.